everybody. Welcome to BRH Cribs Edition. So today I'm going to actually take you for a walk through through my hunting room. Uh, some of you guys might say, well Justin, how do you get a hunting room? Well that's because I don't have kids yet. So and I was fortunate enough that I was able to get myself a hunting room. Also known as storage room. And my wife thinks she's awesome and she's trying to point to herself right now, but she's all right, whatever. Anyway, so she just gave me a bad gesture. Let's go into the room and let's talk about what we're doing today. Come on, let's go guys. I'm gonna have to find some banging MTV Cribs music right now. So what we're doing today is we've gone through in our deer series, uh, where to scout for deer, how to scout for deer, where to put your ladder stands at, to be successful so today we're going to talk about the gear um, probably next week we're going to do a shooting video just kind of shooting around the bow I know not everybody out there is a bow hunter but that's what I am so I'm going to show you kind of some preparation and um, shooting and making sure that we're accurate accurate and ready to go can't talk tonight but anyway guys so we're in the room so we're going to talk about first weapon that is the number one thing so for me, we have Matthew's Halon 6, and that is my weapon of choice. So you can go with whatever kind of accessories you want on a bow, but um, granted, I know this is a very expensive bow, but um, I know there's a lot of you guys out there that like Hoyt, and for whatever reason, Hoyt guys hate Matthew's guys. I just like Matthews. That's what I've tried. That's what I like. So that's what I've been sticking with. So I haven't really tried a Hoyt. Can't knock them. Anyway, guys, it doesn't matter. If you go out and get a $300 bear bow, that's going to kill a deer as well. So um, I made the mistake of I started off cheap and was shooting at the local archery range and decided that I just wanted to test fire um, a Matthews and I didn't think there could be that much of a difference. Well, came home that night and had to tell the wife, I'm sorry, but I spent $1,000. So anyway, guys, uh, be wary. You don't have to have the expensive bows out there, but this is what I shoot. This is what I like. Um, smooth shooting bow, and it's done well for me. So other things to consider are clothing, camo. So first of all, just going into it, you don't have to have all this type of gear. Now I do have a lot of gear, um, not because I have to have it, it's stuff that I found is helpful and um, it's kind of cool. I guess when you start buying hunting stuff you end up wanting to buy more hunting stuff. Anyway guys, that's just the way it goes. So camo, I got Sitka camo this year, um, went from the Cabela's to the Sitka stuff, mainly because of how bulky my Cabela's stuff was um, when I was trying to bow hunt. So trying that out this year, um, I think I'm gonna like it. I've worn it a couple times just getting the feel for it inside the house. Like it a lot, so it's a tundra in the basement down here. Uh, so other things to consider in the field are, especially during the rut, you want some racks, some uh, type of antlers that you can rack together. I've got the black racks that I've found work just as well. Um, some people like to go with the actual natural method of some shed antlers they found or maybe it's a deer they killed and they had antlers around and using those. Um, grunt call, that's always very helpful during the rut. Uh, you can go into scents, you can go into attractants. Um, if you've never tried those before, go on our website, bigredhunters.com. There's attractants and scents on there. Those are very helpful, they work great. Uh, the ones that we actually carry, Cook's Fatal Attraction, those work awesome. Um, those guys are great, and what they produce is top notch. So that's the other thing. Uh, scent control, when we're talking about scents on there, they anytime you're bow hunting, it's very critical to have control of your scent. So we've talked about with placing the tree stands, playing the wind, make sure that we're not blowing our scent everywhere. Any bit of advantage you can get, deer have great instincts. So scent control, uh, I use things that I spray down with before going into 
the blind, and then also I got Ozonics, which, you know, I'll be honest, uh, I think this was 300 when I bought it. They have one that's like 400. I waited a couple of years. I was going back and forth for a couple of years wondering if it was really worth the money. Um, last year, I finally did it when they came out with the new model, and this was a little cheaper. Um, I will say I've had good luck with this. I had quite a bit of deer come and were right in front of me, um, even with the wind blowing my scent right into that direction. So I've had great luck with it. I have other people that are sworn by it that have uh, taken maybe some disabled veterans on a hunt and they use a ground blind where they can't get up into a tree. And um, just all the different scents that come with being a ground blind, this has really produced well for them and they have not had any issues. So that was one thing that I really, found that so far it's been working great um, I'll have to continue to see how it goes this year so we'll see how much I get out in the actual tree blind this year compared to uh, waterfowl but anyway other than that uh, binoculars are a must you definitely want to have some binoculars I used to go out with no binoculars when um, doing bow hunting and uh, one of the things that just became apparent to me is that I really need to be able to tell when I'm looking at a deer in the distance before it gets to me what am I looking at so I can be prepared and be ready. Um, also for glassing and being able to spot deer if you ever want to stalk them it's very important to have. Another thing potentially is a rangefinder. Um, I have a rangefinder for bow so then right in the moment I can figure out what range I need to put my pin at so I know which pin I should use. Um, Another thing that you can do is before getting up in the stand, when you're actually prepping your tree stand, when we talked about in the last video, you can go out for your uh, range finder and put markings or different tapes along your shooting lanes so you know what the distance is. So if the deer walks by, you know what pen to use at that point. That's one way it's really quick that I like to do, um, especially so you're not adding that extra movement of trying to use the range finder plus sometimes deer just, just come in really fast so uh, as you can hear dogs are sitting here eating stuff so but anyway guys so that concludes today's video um, look forward to next week's video hit that bell down below please comment like share do everything uh, you can to help us out here guys would like to hear what you're using out there in the field and uh, maybe some of the items that I might have missed so uh, this week might not be as entertaining but or as informative but just wanted to kind of show you what I take into the field and what I like to use. So, all right, guys, thanks.